Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Zach Grant here with U of I Extension. It's the Urban Ed Connect vlog series. Uh, it's September 26th, 27th today. Uh, wrapping up the outdoor uh, sort of warm season things. Things There's a lot of fruit out here still, but really into sort of fall outdoor crop season and uh, doing plantings and, and transplantings for season extension season. Got some blogs we'll do at the Urban Egg Demo site at Sosuko, kind of show you some of what's going on up there. But I'm getting ready to, to do some fall outdoor transplanting today. Uh, some of these crops will probably mature, well, they're almost mature in, in some cases as a transplant, probably mature enough for us to harvest a little bit unprotected and we'll, we'll actually cover these two beds I'm about to show you uh, with low tunnels and try to get some late fall winter harvest and, and maybe some of it will actually overwinter um, maybe even a harvest from season all season long so just wanted to show you a, a quick little uh, update about that and this quick bed flip what we'll look at here in a second so flipping a bed without doing a lot of invasive soil work or even really broad forking just kind of clearing the bed really quickly, maybe adding some fertilizers and then doing a quick plant. So let's go ahead and, and, and take a look at what, what I'm looking at right now. In what we call Fang, Maine, at Fang Water Farm, uh, there's 14, I believe 40 foot beds uh, in this little section. You can see in the background here, I've got some sorghum Sudan grass cover crop established and getting ready to mow that under soon before it goes to seed. Uh, this is another part of, this is about a half, about 0.4 acres of an section. We only have maybe a third of it planted right now. And, you know, lots of uh, solanaceous fall crops out here still. So I still have a bunch of colored peppers, hot peppers, some eggplant. Tomatoes are winding down the back. We have some uh, dent corn, some cornmeal corn, a few fall crops. It's kind of winding things up. But here are these two beds with this uh, bed of leeks on the left-hand side and this bed of Salanova head lettuce on the right-hand side. I'm uh, prepping the, the other 20-foot half of these beds today to put in some of these really nice transplants we have right here. So this, this bed right here is a bed of Salanova. From the label, you can tell these are uh, started on August 1st, transplanted a month later, and here we are about a month after that, 60 days or so. And you can see pretty nicely fully mature heads at 60 days. We've been harvesting um, from some of these Salanova heads. We just kind of, instead of harvesting the whole head, we actually just harvest part of it for consumption and then leave it to keep growing. So, you know, this is kind of getting trans lettuce transplants in the field in August for a fall crop makes a lot of sense to get to full maturity. We really should have had some other successions of, of leaf lettuce and direct seeding to spinach and things like that. But we've been I've been focusing a little more time at the demonstration site to kind of get that ready and do some plantings in there. So it's not necessarily too late for transplanting certain things. So here I have a few different flats of mainly really cold hardy crops like scallions and turnips and Swiss chard, mustard, and a few uh, head lettuce. And this is all a whole flat of kale here on the left-hand side. So the idea with these is that these, these actually, some of these are started, let's see. Actually, yeah, some of these are quite old. This is these scallions. Primarily scallions were from August 1st. I'm not sure when the turnips are from, but the turnips are actually very mature in there. In fact, you could probably almost just harvest those to, to eat at this point. I have some spinach. But these uh, transplants right here, I think are only about a month old or a little more than a month old. So we should be able to get these transplants out here, you know, get some, some har harvesting still here in September, October, you know, and some, you know, light frost and very light freezes won't damage these. Uh, transplants too much so we are still be able to get some outdoor unprotected harvest from these flats hopefully but what we what we can do is i have enough hoops where in plastic where we can you know create a low tunnel system over these two beds you know we can protect the leaks um for a considerable period of time in fact pretty much over winter if you have a an established bed of leaks like this 
if you can get them covered even with just a layer of plastic, uh, they should survive even pretty harsh winters and you should be able to harvest uh, these throughout the winter months. But in these other two beds, in the back half of these beds, we'll get some of these transplants in, maybe do some direct seedings, and but eventually we'll cover both of these beds uh, with a low tunnel to give them even more protection. And, you know, that low tunnel should give us some good season extension, you know, through October, through November. I mean, when we get very, very, very low temperatures, talking, you know, close to single digit to below zero, that's where a low tunnel, it, we'll start to see some crop failure at that point. But, you know, some of the even cold hardiest stuff should even survive those temperatures. And even if we can't har do much harvesting in the winter, we could be able to overwinter them. Now, if we had a, a large walk-in structure like a high tunnel, we could add additional layers of protection. That would be a little different. But, you know, low tunnels for out in the field are, are inexpensive season extension. And you can just experiment to, to see what works with, you know, your particular microclimate and the set of crops that you actually choose. So I'm um, going to do a little bit of a sort of quick bed flip. So both of these beds have been broad forked this year once. But in this area right here, this is actually a potato bed. That was the first crop this year. All I'm going to do is rather than broad forking, and I can just double check this with the spade, you know, if I can, especially for, you know, sort of shallow rooted transplants, if you can just get a spade in there and go down, you know, six to eight inches, that's pretty much all you need. You don't really need to come in here and broad fork again you know, probably add a little bit of fertility, which I'm going to do to the bed, but I just need to get in here, clean up these weeds, incorporate the fertilizer, rake it, and then drop my grid and throw the transplants in the ground. So that's thinking about a quicker turnaround flip for your beds is a definite way to make your operation more lean and efficient. Now, sometimes the beds might be too compacted and you might need to loosen them broad fork. But as we all know, if we've broad forked before, it, it takes some time. So, and then also, you know, not having to bring in a tiller or any other invasive uh, equipment will help, you know, keep your soil structure intact. So I'm just going to do that really quick, uh, get these beds prepped, and then throw some of these uh, transplants. And some of them are going here, and then the good bulk of them are going to go up to the, the Sosuko demo site, and we'll show throwing some of those in a little bit later in a different vlog. So... Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some time-lapse video now of some bed prep. We'll talk to y'all next time.